prayed over it, I was thinking, Lord, what, what, what am I going to bring to your people? And uh, I went over, I never go with my old Sunday school books, you know what I mean? And I went back to a lesson that we did among obedience among neighbors. And the pastor, before he uh, went out for his surgery, let us continue to keep him in prayer. He was saying something about the Israelites, how they were being God's chosen people, but they were hard-headed at some times, and they didn't really <clears throat> want to adhere to what thus said the Lord. So, obedience among our neighbors, and, and we're going to just touch briefly on when he gave the law of the commandments, we had Leviticus uh, 19 and 9, and we're going to uh, read that in unison, and then we're going to expound a little bit on the uh, verses. Good evening. Let's see. Uh, Leviticus 19 and 9, and we're going to stick a pen and some of the verses that um, that we're going to get started with. And um, I'm glad to see Sister Ellen. I said, I'm going to pull one of the pastors to move on. I sure to be my reader for the night for, uh, for one of the scriptures that I wanted to read. Is that all right, Sister Ellen? Are we there? Okay. We're going to um, start out reading, for those that want to stand for God's word, Leviticus 19.9, and we're going to read that thus. I'll read the first one. It says, And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field, neither shall thou gather the gleaning of thou harvest. Yeah. Everybody? Everybody, yes. Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another, Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. Thou shalt not hurt to the death, nor put a tongue in the mouth before the wine, but shalt bear that precious heart. I am the Lord. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shall thou judge thy neighbor. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tailbearer among the mighty, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy enemy. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in the any wise rebuke thy neighbor, and not suffer sin upon him all Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. And so that would which read for us, please, uh, Psalm 15 and 1. That's one of our related scripture and uh, read the uh, division of Psalm um, 15. Taking up the reproach of this, and those in whose eyes a vile person is contempt. 
from James Knox. He that putteth not out his money to use it, nor take it reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved.
that won't lead us astray. But what that what happens a lot of times what we do is we get we get going before our time. Yeah. And and this is the reason why a lot of times children and uh, and adults too uh, disobedience will lead us down the path of destruction. And that's where we are in the world today. There's so many destruction going on. There's so many things that people need to first filter back and say what. Why am I in this place? What is going on? If we take a, 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 an inventory of our life daily, let me tell you something. It'll shock you to some of the things that we do that we think that's that you know it's wrong. But mm -hmm. we take inventory and say, you know what? I got to make what's right. Because when I, me and my wife are doing what this young lady is doing, these children are watching us. Amen. And guess what? We can't get to the point five or ten years down the road because they're going to grow up and then they'll throw this back us. Well, you did. Man, so right. I do it. And what happens is, it becomes a generational curse. Wow. And the generational curse are hard and broken. And the thing is, if we don't do it from the beginning, that's why I always want to throw to my boys. If you start out right, Amen. it ends yeah. up right. But you start out to get too fast, because the thing is, if, they, if my boys like that, they got they kids or whatever, they have grandkids, but they can always come back home. But you got these children, when they get disobedient, they don't want to move, they want to be the man in the house, you need your own place. So again, we got to follow the guidelines. The guidelines is just, just like our parents were doing that, it's the same way God the guidelines for leadership and things for things to transpire in our lives. But when we when we get out of the commandments and the will of God, we head into destruction. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Yes, sir. Um so on this point, uh, a lot of these kids put I look at throwing a lot of these kids are bad, so they need God. And because they're going everywhere, running around doing what they want to do, breaking. Um, there was some garbage outside by a dumpster and these kids, like, they just go in there and destroy everything and their parents are not watching them. And I come, I came from, I used to be like, I used to be, I used to be a bad kid myself. I used to be, that guy was in group home from age six to age 18 because I was very rebellious. He don't want to listen to nobody. So, from that thing that when it comes to um, that point where they, like 18, 16, 17, 18, 19 years old, 20 years old. My point with that is they want to get out of the house so they won't have to listen to their parents anymore. Amen. So they can be more disobedient. <coughs> That's the point right there. Instead of staying home longer and listening to their parents and and because they're not ready. If they think they're ready, they're not ready. And they say, Mom, can I move in because I didn't have enough money? For the renting a bill, can I come home? I can't make it. And then my parents said, I told you so. You're not mm -hmm. ready. You're not ready. God was telling me through the father and mother that you wasn't ready. So that's why the kids now are so hard on me. I thank God I got my weapons. I thank God that God was hard on me. Because I was very hard on me. I was very rebellious. I thank God for being hard on me because, whoo. Kids now, I mean, we can't discipline them now. They don't want to listen to nobody. And for the children, we will. That's right. what I'm talking about. I was very happy. Don't remember all of it. Yeah. <laughs> I was very happy. God put me in a group home instead of being locked up in, in jail. Amen. That was my deal. That was, that was God's truth. And most of the time in the group home, I tell you, while we were rebelling and getting out of the group home, they were restraining me hard. Like, restraining me straight and tight. That was my extreme time. Because mm. I was being rebellious in the home too. So that's why these kids, man, they need to listen to parents. And the parents need to have some backbone. Because the parents, it's the parents' fault. I'm telling you, these parents, these parents, you know why they don't have no backbone? Because they're doing the same thing to those parents. It's a generational curse. Well, that's what you say. Well, generational curse. Well, here's the thing, too. The thing is that, that I realize is that a lot of people fail to realize that the parents didn't get the right teaching that they need. So now in turn, they don't know how to instill it to their children. Mm -hmm. and, then, and here's the kicker, really, is that parents don't want to be parents anymore. They want to be their friends. You see, you know, me, boy, they, I'm white, me, I'm all going out far.
moving right along, as we continue in Leviticus 19 and 10, uh, we talked about the, the Book of Ruth for provide a concrete example of how this was actually done about the gleaming of the field and how Boaz uh, got his wife and everything. Uh, but the conclusion of the command, as I said earlier, that I am the Lord, your God, mm -hmm. Leviticus 1910, this reminded Israel not only that the Lord demanded this of them, but also that compassion, and that's a word that, that goes along with being obedient, that compassion is consistent with his own nature, that we serve a, a loving God that is very compassionate. Israel was commanded to show compassion in ways benefiting their agricultural economy. It's meaning that what? They were blessed to have the field that they would be able to glean. You know, every year they show how the over in the plant city, the coldness of the strawberry. And what the, what the blessing is, the colder the weather, the sweeter the berries. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's a blessing mm -hmm. right there, you know. And they always show this one guy who went over and they, they interview him every year and I just see him, he's smiling all the way to the face. <laughs> now we're going to go move right on to the, we're going to, um, in uh, Leviticus 19, 11, and 13. And in this, these verses here, they forbid fraud against one one's neighbor. And then it also it shows us how we can commit fraud against our neighbor. It can not only be against envy, pride, not even speaking to him. Those are some of the things of the flesh that some people live by their neighbors and don't, don't know even speak to them. I would have a long service and, and my, my, one of my customers kept asking How's my neighbor? I said, huh? He said, how's my neighbor? He said, you sit more than I do, but you cut his grand. So I said, yeah, but y'all live by one another. He said, we don't speak. I want to say, well, why are you acting about the neighbor? <laughs> you can't rob. <laughs> and then this verse says, ye should not steal. We repeat and applies that into the eighth commandment. And we, we all know where the commandments come from, right? When a book of Exodus, Exodus 20. <clears throat> and in neither deal falsely. Deceitful dealing are intended to take advantage of a person, getting from him some material or psychological benefit in which one is not entitled. Basically, what it says, this is stealing, whether done overtly or indirectly. Or indirectly. And you all, we all human. We all know when we do something, we did something, something wrong and stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not allowed to park on the, on the street in my community. You know what I mean? Guilty. And I'm saying I'm wrong because when that <laughs> postman had to drive around my village and deal with somebody mail, I'm not being too, too neighborly. You know what I mean? So, and I don't want to, uh, you know, those are the little things that you have to. Uh, as you read earlier in Psalm 50, you have to check check yourself, you know what I mean, and to uh, keep it real. Just be honest with yourself. Now you know you didn't you do the good or right thing, you know what I mean, or, or, or your neighbor trying to speak, speak to you early in the morning and stuff, you have had your first cup of coffee, you know what I mean, you know, good morning, what's so good about it? <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Who wants to know? <laughs> you know what I mean, you know. It's just this way that words mean something and words hurt. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, uh, my, my brother that's showing say he's and he, and he's, uh, he, I never understood uh, Nicky River can relate to it. He said, they you talk to about it, they, they, they want to feel you smiling through the phone. I said, smiling, what? Mm -hmm. I said, I ain't smiling through no phone. What do you know what I mean? Hello, how you doing? He said, yeah, he said think about it, look what you're just saying. He said, they don't want to hear it. You know, I'll play on the voice and you're going to smile through the phone. I'm saying, yeah, that's why you're insurance man. <laughs> that's my story. <laughs> okay. And it says, added to this prohibition is the second. Okay, now we know the first thing is by not doing the right thing. That's part of the eighth commandment. And it's, a, it's important that we, we include these two together. Deceitfulness and stealing. 
And I said, how are you going to put these two together? And it says, it says, added to this prohibition is the second one. Neither lie one to another. This, and then it goes to the ninth. So, so when God wrote up the law, he had the eighth one right here. Then he had the ninth one, which forbid, which forbids bearing false witness. So stealing and lying go hand in hand. And, and, and I heard the pastor say many times, whatever they hear, the grandmother said that they heard two people say, what is it? If, if you lie, you're steal, if you're stealing, you're alive. They go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. You know what I mean? And I was told, I said, well, not the time we've been told that what? All lies need a crutch. Understand? Yeah. So just for us to set the truth for the start. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And the other one that I, I understood that every time somebody bring them home, they carry them home. I was going to hold up with that. Yeah, one lie. Another lie. Another couple that come that lie, you know. And then you forget about the lie you told the first time. What I, I, uh, I thought you said when somebody said, well, don't, don't stop me to lie. <laughs> <laughs> and then I heard somebody say somebody was lying, tell the lies so many times, whatever, then he finally said, this time I ain't lying. <laughs> <laughs> But you say your life is still. Yeah. Here the here the, the lying occurs as a means of defrauding a neighbor of property or reputations, you know. And it's amazing, you know, in um, <clears throat> when um, a lot of the, the police shows or whatever, they they go to the neighbor, they want to know, they want to know how it's a neighbor, you know what I mean? And then they take that information. That you, you know, in, in my neighborhood, you know what I mean? I don't know about D.C. Gray, you know what I mean? Every morning, on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you know what I mean? You can leave the house by one thirty or 2 o'clock every morning, you know what I mean? And I don't know see him until he get back late or whatever, you know what I mean? So, and, you know, only time I see him on Monday and Tuesday, well, I'm a shift worker, those my hours and stuff, you know what I mean? But those are the, when you don't know, I heard somebody say the day or whatever. Somebody said, don't know, just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> you know, but those are the things that, and you notice that when you want to say something, when they interview you on a lot of shows, they be writing it down. Okay. Elder said that, okay, get his neighbor mowed the dread for money and went to go pick up the cookies and whatever and put them down the gutter so, so that the city can, uh, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, so we got to be very careful how we can, what, falsely give information that, that, that hurt our uh, neighbor. Okay. And then, uh, then I, 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 I kept reading this. It said, this leads into the next generation that you should not swear by my name falsely. Neither shall thou profane the name of thy God. And this is a reminder of the third covenant command in the next verse 27, which forbids taking God's name in mm. vain. Now we get sleep with it now. We get, you know what I mean? God what? No, God's burning. Okay. okay. Oh, holy cow. We get sleep with it now. You know what I mean? But, you, but we want to give a, 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 a reference to it. And he said, thou shalt not take, take my hand. My name in vain. And, it, it, and I can't read this, and it says, Don't get the Lord's name in vain, but some are not above enlisting his name in an evil cause. In this case, to cheat one's neighbor. A lie is a lie is a lie. A lie is sanctified by an oath. And the Lord's holy name is profane. How much time we said, you know what I mean? And I and we were out so we were not the same that I swear. Why? Why? Yes, they do. Like, 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 you're supposed to tell the truth. 
Nothing but the truth to help you, God. Oh, God. But that's something I would always talk to, that we should never swear. You know, they never explain um, in so many ways why. But you just said it's a real child, and that's something you shouldn't do. That's yes, right. Yeah. And, and uh, that uh, scared me because my grandmother said, don't be playing with God, you, you be swearing. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Well, I'm telling the truth, but just speak the truth. Well, they're right in the frame of God. Because right. they don't believe me. Right. You know what I mean? So, you know, and, uh, and, and then they gave an example. They said that when Jacob <coughs> deceived Isaac in order to steal Esau's birthright, his blessing, he resorted to this. When he brought in that savory meat for his father, Isaac asked him with, Isaac asked him with something with very suspicious how he had obtained it so quickly. The old man knew, knew something was going on. He meant to say, you're going to fix my crazy venison bacon that quick? You know what I mean? You know, but, and you know, to, to make a good stew or good brew, it, it, it takes a while, you know. Yeah. It takes a while. I listen to some of it, because it's a good new damn gumbo when you starve with the room. And I said, okay. I said, man, do it, do it. So it, 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 it takes a while. I'm going to talk so uh, junkie for those who don't know. I listen to Urban Radio and listen, and I like it. I'm, I'm not listening to uh, the Christian channel, you know what I mean? And if I've heard any corny of jokes, like it on the subject, it's Joel Osteen. So I'd like to start off with something funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so Jacob answered, and then here's here Jacob now, <coughs> lying to his father. But he did it kind of slick, like he said, Jacob answered, because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, sometimes I've heard how many times we, when grandma makes something real good and something you can get too good offended. Oh, grandma, this is so good. You put your foot in. Oh, you put your foot in. What you trying to say, child? You know what I, mean? I, I wash my feet. No, grandma, that means it's real good. <laughs> And he said that he did not just lie about the source of the meat. He profaned God's name in doing so by just making that statement, because the Lord thy God brought it to me. That's in Genesis 27, 20. And it says that we need to be aware of those who constantly claim that God, this one I like, led them to do certain deeds. To be God's will, those deeds must be consistent with what? His word. Our last pastor, Robert Swigert, was constantly telling the congregation, they were constantly telling him, the Lord told me. The Lord told me to tell you. And he would use that scripture. How can you hear without a So how the Lord going to tell you before he tells me? You know, but the Lord told me to tell you, brother, and you listen to that, you know. So we got to be very careful how we say that a God led me to do something, you know. And now they tell you real quick, okay, just stay in the line. Okay, good, we all right. Just stay in the line. I'm glad we have a pastor right now, you conversation would never uh, come up, you know what I mean? Because I believe that he knows the word, he believes the word, he uh, preach the word. To attach his God name to sin and falsehood is the most callous. I read it over here. What do you mean? To attach God's name to sin and falsehood is the most callous form of profanity. It don't get no worse than that. It don't work, get no worse than that. That's a, something that I don't want to ever be accused of lying on God. Yeah. This is serious business. They call it blasphemy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it's those little things that you can do and lie on our creator, the creator of all mankind. We're going to sit here and uh, don't, don't trust him, don't want to believe him, don't want to be old, obedient to him, you know what I mean? But I'm going to get up in the morning and come out to his holy tower now, for, you know what I mean, and tell, tell the pastor what he should, should be doing. Or, or tell our uh, neighbors uh, what they should be doing. And we've got to be very 
careful how we can just take something so compassionate done out of love for one another that we can let that flesh come out that we can let Satan enter to us and say the wrong thing when somebody just push that button the, the, the wrong way. You know what I mean? You know, I told you don't fall from the bread. I just paid the, the man to the, the first guy the bread and now you're doing it, whatever. But I'm sorry, you know, you can do it again or whatever, you know what I mean? Hey, I've been mean, telling you, been doing it for the last five times now. There's enough, enough, you know what I mean? One thing is, you should know, so we got to be very careful how we interact with, with our neighbor. And it says, he reminds us solemnly as he reminded Israel. And there's that word again, I am the Lord. He will not overlook the guilt of the ones who take, I like to say, take his what? Take his name in vain. God gonna he's, he's gonna remember. You know what I mean? My name is Nathan Edward Gray. And then when you, my mom I heard you tell us about it once, she said, uh, Nathan, she said, no, no, his name is Nathan. If I want to name it Nathan, Nathan, I'm gonna name it Nathan. His name is Nathan. Okay, mom. Okay. <laughs> so names are important, and when we use God's name, in vain if it's wrong, whatever. Now I have a, a pet peeve with, with, with cards. Uh greeting cards, whatever. I just hate to see my master's name on a small name. That does something for me. It does something to me because he's supposed to be reverent. It's a capital. It's a capital G, you know what I mean? And to see a small, even when you even when you text whatever, you know what I mean? I say, you know, God is God. Well, I hear one guy say, I don't like it because don't call me no God, for that's for the God's name back. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? It's how we reverence, how we love the Lord by God. You know, we love him with all our heart. Right. A, lot of, a lot of people have gotten away from that reverence. That reverence. reverence. Yes, yes. That's why so much is going on. So much is, is, is out of order. So much is not the way it should be, you know, because of the reverence of who God is. Yes. You know, when you have Mm. In their place, mm. that's 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 bad. You know, when you got people don't reverence the pastor, you know, and, and I'm not saying putting these people on a pedestal, so, so, yes, right. but you show the respect that is due. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yes, I'm not saying that. Oh, you can you 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 gotta you gotta be skinny with the pastor. I ain't what I'm saying, but it's it's the respect that you give them if they have a job and if they're over you. That's just like our nephew. Also, you know, 
that if we don't talk to one another and teach one another, right. we will have a funeral going on here that's on Facebook and people wondering what are they doing down there at St. Matthew? What are they doing down here at St. Matthew when we know what our creed is? We are our Bible believing church that believed in the all Almighty. We try to preach, we will, we, we do preach the truth here, the word of God. But when you have people right here who don't respect that, they take my holy tabernacle, this holy tabernacle. And the things I heard, I wasn't at the truth, the things I heard what the saints of this church had to do to get us back on track. But this is a house of prayer. And God said it would not be a den of thieves if you're a house of prayer. You know how many people that found in our Bible come out on Wednesday night just to come to that door to have that moment of silence, have that, that, have that, 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 that moment. There is something about coming to the house of prayer. I heard the elder say that I, my son needs to leave school and go home and get started. But he wants to be in the house. He wants to be in the house. One of my things is that when he finished on Wednesday night, when he gets his car, he goes. He goes, but he, he wants to talk to him. But there is something about coming to the house of prayer to find that solace, to find that, that peace. And when I want to talk to somebody, uh, I call them the God of God. Says, Dick River, where you at? I'm going to call the sky. I'm going to not sky. I'm not going to call the sky. I'm going to I said, okay, well, I'm going to talk to you. I want to be your ride partner before I be your home or whatever. There's something about connecting with the saints. There's something about being in the house of prayer. There's something about being around family church family. And we don't take it very lightly. Some people think we do, you know what I mean? And I heard that once we start acting up and yeah, we do act up at the wrong time because that devil or Satan will, will, you know what I mean, the enemy will come inside there when you, yeah, you say when you take, take a deep breath and come back, but they say, well now it's my turn, you know what I mean? So you ain't meditate right now because that you, you, you still angry. You know what I mean? So you, so you need to just let set up the face. We are almost done. I just want to get <coughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Some of my brothers. Where since Jackman left the church, uh, there was a time, uh, and I see it so many times when I've seen uh, different people who come at it. There was a time, military men back in the day, when they would stand in places, they would lower their, their, their caps, and they just they would Did you get it?
Yeah, love love for church. the church, if you say, you know what, I might not go to church, but I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to kick against what God is doing. And we, we got to, and it also goes back to what we got to be in play to implement it. To say, listen, you might not, but I'm going to, I'm going to say, listen, I'm giving the drive or the push to say, listen, this is what's going to take place in our church. Like I said, Sunday, not the Christ. It's the thing, you got to realize when people are children. When children come to church, Amen. when I go to church, you didn't teach children. Amen. The, the usher would, would come up with, with, with that program. And, and you knew exactly what it You knew exactly what it meant. Right you knew exactly you what know, it meant. You know, you know, like, oh, boy, you show so much. And you didn't, when they talk to you, you didn't do this. <laughs> I didn't even talk. But back then in St. Patrick, there was a lot of stuff that they implemented that they just didn't do. But see, what happened, the level of people say, now, oh, he's just a child. No. What word is that? Train him. So when you, excuse me, when you train them up, they know how to care. They might go away from home, but they, they, they know the level of respect when they're out. Amen. So reverence is the key. I got this from uh, on the uh, Instagram from Derek Daniel. He just talked about it in the business in Orlando. He says, purpose is the answer to a problem. When you know your purpose, you solve problems. But when you don't, you cause them. That, that, I just put that out there. We don't record it. Huh? We see. It says, it says, purpose is the answer to a problem. When you know your purpose, you solve problems. But when you don't know your purpose, you cause the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tim. Brother Tim. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We're almost done. We want to ask the elder with your open door for the church. Uh, <clears throat> as we get ready to, to, to close, I want to touch on. Uh, about the, uh, we should talk about the people of Israel. We should talk about the Israelites and, we, and and what they were saying by now, and I thought it was very interesting that it, as in Leviticus uh, 19 and 13, and, and it is stating right in that thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him, the wages of him is hired, shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. I said, and then I, and as, as I look at what this author was saying, and it says, after repeating the command not to defraud or rob a neighbor in the vertical, this law is applied to the treatment of a hired worker. That's okay. Then, there's nothing new in the sun. It says, day laborers were hired for a variety of tasks in biblical time. They were both natives, Israelites, foreigners, and they usually were poor. It was common practice to pay them each day at the end of the day. Makes sense, right? Day labor. That, that's why we have. I, I want to get paid at the end of the day. You know, and you treat them, you know, there's no different than when they come over here illegally, immigrants, whatever. <laughs> you know, if they work for you, pay them, pay them people. <laughs> that's it. You know. And it's, it's said that it, they, the wages vary according to the agreement. I understand that. But it says, uh, but then there were some people, you know, you know people not going to do right. It said there were some people who did not do the right thing. It said, it's always emphasized that it makes no difference whether the worker is an Israelite or a foreigner. That's what I just got to say. It said, to the whole wages due is a sin God takes note of. Yet it was a sin taken too lightly by many in Israel. In other words, when when I get my money, when I get paid, you get paid. No, that wasn't your agreement. At the end of the day, I wanted I, I wanted to get, get paid, and um, sometimes people just just don't wanna uh, do. Right, because of um, different reason and stuff. But I just, I thought that was very interesting and it came from a uh, part of the law that they're saying that uh, just do the right thing uh, about the people, whether they be foreigners, whether they be your high labor. And, and who's the one that we don't want to pay the most? Our kinfolk. Hmm. <laughs> okay. We were going to close out with the last one. And it says uh, in Leviticus 19 and 17 and 18. It says, 
until, I love this part where he said, until hatred is banished, all kinds of injustice will flourish. First John 3, 15 says, the heart, the heart is the fountain of good and evil. So it needs to be cleansed. This is too shame. This is too much of a shame that we're still talking about the insurrection of January the 6th. Until we learn to love ye one another. And this does not mean that we overlook our brother's fault. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thou neighbor. Rebuking someone for sin is like you doing him or her a favor. How many believe in that? Amen. Rebuking someone. And you don't know, I may sit in that front pew or whatever, but when it comes down to rebuking or getting somebody gay, I was from sure the pastor of the porch too. You know what I mean? And uh, and I don't mind sharing it with you. First Sunday. He would wash his hand and he came out and said, I got an offer to you. He said, we couldn't help you. You didn't let us know that your wife was sick or whatever. Didn't we love you? <clears throat> and you had to come back or something. I said, we grew openly so that others would fear. <laughs> 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 Amen. Yeah. 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 And it, it, but they he said that getting off me, but it served two purpose, right? You got off of him, yeah. and got off of me. Yes, sir. And believe me, I want you down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so those are kind of that's what I that's when I when I prayed. I said, let us continue just to love on one another, and that's how you, we have to regroup up openly so that we feel. You know what I mean? You know. And I believe that those are the, in our in our prayer process. Ain't gonna do what you ain't gonna do what Greg did. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm gonna let, let the church know whatever you know this and that is, and we go from that. And closing out, and I want to uh, touch on this and this, and I want to your input on this. It says finally, a compassionate attitude means means we show com compassion, we show love, but it says. Thou shalt not avenge or bear any grudge against the children of thy people. I said, how can you have a compassionate attitude? I showed the glory at the morning of Christ. And then it, then it says, uh, we said, what's up? Christ, you shall not the morning of Christ for fault. That's you, but he is compassionate and tender heart. Honor is that how you were to God.
the second great commandment in Matthew 22, 39, and Mark 12, 31. I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for allowing me to bring the word this evening. And, uh, and first of all, I want to thank the Lord for allowing me to do this delivery. And let us uh, continue to uh, go out uh, in prayer. Let us continue to pray for our pastor. And you know I said? Go out in prayer. It's always, it's always time for prayer. Because I love to the river and you love to say, when the prayer is going. That's when the prayer is going. That's what's going on. Listen, come down. We're going to ask the elders to do what we want to do. Amen. Amen. Thank you, praise for
Stephen Carter Lucas. And I catch him tonight, God, from the crown of his head. Yes, God. Not only him tonight, God, just because he's a blessing. We pray, God, that he's in the hospital tonight, God, that someone in the room, someone in the hall, God, that can receive the same blessing as him. We know, God, that you are a good God. You are way with us and you provide. So that's God, that's why when we come, we come in to the house of the Lord, we come in, God, to lift you up. Give you praise, give you glory, give you honor. Because we realize, God, you're here. You're here. You're waiting. Yes. You're providing the heart. Yes, sir. So, oh, God, that's what we need and depend on. Yes, God. For everything. God, that's something that's all things. All things. God, we just trust you to be there again. God, we thank you tonight for this community. We thank you, God, for those that live in this community and follow in this community, God. And we ask you, God, that you continue to bless them. Right now, Lord. Bless their homes, bless their families, bless their children. Continue to eat with Brother Tim, Lord, across the street. Brother Young, Lord, God. We ask you, God, for strength. Yes, Lord. To encourage them, God, to have a new walk in life. And don't let the devil come on you doing something that you don't yes, need Lord. Yes, Lord. Because we know, God, the disobedient child, they will be cut off. Yes, Lord. So, God, you come to give us life and live more abundantly. So, God, we thank you. And when we get the opportunity, God, to encourage children, young men, young women, God, that we open our mouth boldly and tell them, God, that the way to sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Yes. So, God, we thank you for that. Thank God, we ask you, God, that you continue to bless our church. Bless us as we come back on Sunday, God, to lift you up and give you praise. Lord. Yes, Lord. We ask you, God, just to walk on again and keep her lifted up. All yes, of these seasoned saints of the church. Continue to bless them, God. Continue to strengthen them. Yes. Bless them on every day inside. And God, we ever mindful and pray, pray for God to be your name for We pray tonight, God, that we leave this place tonight for sight. Just give us travel and mercy and the right. Yes. All of us have left our place to set this day. Some left early in the morning, some left God uh, late. But we pray that we return to our homes now, that we find them better than we are. And God, you continue to put a hedge of protection around us, God, through all that we go through. We know, God, that you'll keep us if we want to be saved. You'll save us, God, if we want to be saved. Yes, you'll deliver us if we want to be good. So, God, for that, we say thank you. Exactly. Bless our sister Allison now, God. I heard the coughing and different things. God, we just ask you, God, as she goes through, God, with her job. Yes. Deal with different people, interacting, yes, God. Find you, God, God, before you be there for a moment. We ask you to strengthen us so that you might find your name. Yeah. Help us on yeah. every step of the way. Yeah. We pray, God, that our brother Ethan be right there by our side. Yes, and Lord. help us, God, and encourage that we can make it together. Right now, because we are the one. God, not only them tonight, but me and my wife and other ones, and family members, and those that are raising their children. We pray, God, that you should continue to right right pray. Somebody think, God, that they're praying and the prayers are not being answered. But we're tonight, God, we're with you. God, you've done it before. Let's do it again. You can do it again. Yes, God, we give your name praise. We give your name glory. We give your name honor. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.